Hi everyone, I trust that you all have been a wonderful day. I want to share with you all my experience why I had to leave the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I've been wanting to share this video a while back now. However, I was too emotional. I think I'm better prepared now. However, before I do so, let us pray. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for this privilege that I have to come before you and to call you Father. Thank you for the experience I had. I pray that I'm about to share it, that you just bring back to my mind everything that I will do so effectively and everyone who listens will be blessed and will be edified. Help me not to be mean, help me to be loving and not bitter, but to be better and just represent you in the best way I can. Amen. Okay, so being a Seventh-day Adventist, guys, if you are a Seventh-day Adventist, you know we believe that we are special people. We are a called out set, a chosen people that is called out to proclaim the everlasting gospel or the tree angel message. In order for you to be special, you must become a Seventh-day Adventist. At least that's what I thought back then. Okay, so... Uh, being a Seventh-day Adventist, I was so serious. I was, I loved my church. And if anyone ever say to me that you're going to leave this church, I would say you're a liar. I never, never, ever thought I would have left the Seventh-day Adventist church. However, it wasn't my plan. It wasn't my doings. It was the Lord's. And I love him. I have to obey him. Only he could have done something this beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so... I'm just going to go straight into it. There, There's so much things popping up in my head, but I'm just going to ignore them and say what happened. Okay, so... Some summer ago, about two summer, one summer ago, I think, I was away. And it was basically we were ministering, we were doing ministry work, um, evangelism, and all those kind of stuff. We do it every summer. If you're a seven events, you go over all over the world, different parts of the world, to do missionary work, to tell people about Jesus, and so on. Yeah. So this. This Friday evening, I was, I came home early. I was so dedicated. I was so serious. I took my beliefs very serious, especially the Sabbath. So this was a Friday evening, and I came home very early because, you know, Ellen White said that we should meet the Sabbath. It should find us worshiping God. And I was a strong believer of Ellen G. White. I loved her writings dearly, like, I would be so blessed whenever I read her writings. However, so this Friday evening, I came home early, and I was doing just that. I was welcoming the Sabbath. I was worship. I had my hymn, I had my study guide, and I was just, you know, welcoming the Sabbath, singing songs and praying and those stuff. However, this is where it gets scary, guys. As I sat there in worship, now, okay, let me share this with you before I go any further. So, I have, um, I have come to a place where I have a relationship with God where we talk like a real person. Like, I can literally hear Him when He speaks to me, okay? To... To, to, to get you to better understand what I'm saying, I'm just going to share with you briefly this experience I had while canvassing. You know what? I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm just going to tell you what happened. Okay. What happened? All right. So, as I sat there worshiping, praying, and singing, and you know what we do, I heard the voice of the Lord. And the voice said to me, Now, I, I wish I could give you the, what, what led to all of this. I, 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 I no longer saw what was special about us. I 
no longer saw why we deserve to be called special over other people when we were doing all kind of garbage so many wrong stuff we were doing that yet still we deserve to be called the 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 remnant but people out there they're doing wrong stuff and their wrong disqualified them from being called the remnant but our wrongs we still get to be called the remnant so I was questioning stuff but I had no idea that what happened would happen because I was so sure that the Seventh day Adventist Church was God's true church it was God's remnant church and you know it is the church and it's a it's a wonderful church and everyone who's going crazy inside of it everyone who is doing foolishness and a whole bunch of garbage as Ellen White said that God is gonna shake them out so I was just there waiting for God to shake them out because they were misrepresenting the church they were misrepresenting God and I was just so angry with what they were doing so I I started to say why why are we called God's people when we're doing so many wrong things however back to what happened as I sat there I heard the voice of the Lord this has become my custom I have heard God several times it has become our thing God have sent me places not by reading the Bible but he out loud say Chris do this Chris do that and that's the relationship we had that's where I am with God okay so as I sat there and I was having worship I heard a voice the voice said to me Chris you don't have to keep the Sabbath guys when I heard when I heard those words my entire world came tumbling down I was destroyed in a second I couldn't believe it when I heard what the voice said I stood up and I said what and tears came running down my eyes I I couldn't understand I was confused I was afraid like I was falling apart everything everything that could go wrong went wrong in those few moments and I stood there and I said I couldn't understand what was that I said what and I heard nothing I heard I heard nothing I just I heard nothing at all I was just I can't find words to tell you what I felt, but I died that day. Like everything that I that I that I that I, that my faith was built on was just taken away from me in seconds. I stood up and I I started to cry, and I was like, "What do you mean? What do you mean? No, you." There's no way you can say that the Sabbath should not be kept. There's just no way possible you can say that to me. And I keep saying, what do you mean? What do you mean? But nothing, nothing happened. I heard nothing. Nothing was said. So I stood up and I keep walking back and forth. Wondering what is this? I... I called my fiance at the time and I I told her I said to her I said hun I just heard a voice and the voice said to me that you don't have to keep the Sabbath and when I said that to her like she started to cry and reason for this was we we have seen several students attend NCU came there as good students loving students God fearing students studying religion and theology and in their second year I don't know what why but they completely changed they became this different person who no longer fear God's no longer respect him they will do stuff that they would dare not do they would not even respect the Sabbath no more and they will just become something that was not good so when I said this to her in her mind she thought I was becoming one of them so of course she started to cry 
But where I was, I wasn't emotionally prepared to deal with her crying. And, you know, I wanted to... I wanted to be listened to, I wanted to be understood, I wanted someone to explain to me what is going on, what is this, what is this supposed to mean, what's the meaning of all this, so I got off the phone, I reached out to my colleagues and I told them what just happened and they all told me they all told me that that God will not say those words to me and that it it must be the devil at the time I was just so afraid I was just so destroyed so I believed them over what the voice said to me and they told me that it was the devil talking to me and God will not say those words to me but where I was at the time, I was just not prepared to be told that this was the devil talking to me and that this was not God. So they all told me, not one, I'm not talking about one person, more than one people, they, person, sorry, they told me that that was the devil and there's no way God is going to say such things to me. And I believe them. I believe them. Oh, sorry. I believe them and it was my custom to say happy Sabbath to everyone on Friday Eve and I would type it in my phone, I would put it on Facebook and as, as I say let me say this before I forget when this all happened I said some stuff on Facebook which um, uh, maybe wasn't the best way or you know I was angry I was going through a lot and I was bitter so I just say stuff so I wanted to I want to apologize for if, for anyone who I've Hurt or say any, anything yeah I'm very sorry about that but I was going through a lot okay so they told me that this was the devil talking to me and God will not say such things to me so I I was somewhat comforted and I I went on my phone and I was typing happy Sabbath to everyone and I would I was gonna put it on Facebook and everything but when I typed it on my phone the first time and I was about to send it, I heard the voice the second time and he said, Chris, don't do it. If others want to do it, you let them do it, but you don't do it, you know better. And I just couldn't understand what was going on with me, so I stood up again and of course I was afraid, I was terrified. And I said to that voice, you cannot tell me this. By this time, I, I really believed it was the devil. So I said, there's no way you can tell me not to keep the Sabbath. No way. And I rebuke, I rebuke God, <laughs> who I thought was the devil. And I said those words and I say happy sabbath to all who I was saying that to but just as I did that it was as if God it was as if God said to me okay if you want to do this fine do it do it alone and that peace that I had that joy that you no know, the spirit of God it was gone he left me because I refused to listen to him and I listened to others over God who have been leading me for the for, for so long and we have been through so much he left me because I refused to listen to what he was saying 
And when that happened, and my joy, my inner peace was gone, everything was just gone. I realized that I have done something wrong. This was not the first this happened. So when this happened, sorry, I, I can't do without God. So I prayed. I prayed and I said to him, I said, God, I don't know what you're doing. And I don't understand this. But if this is what you want me to do, I'll do it. And when I said those words to God, a peace came over me like it was not like anything that I've ever experienced. It was just so amazing. A peace just came over me. It was it was just so much. I was just I was just so lifted. I was lifted up. And I had this peace, I had this joy inside of me. After saying, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I felt at peace with God. I had no idea where to go from here or what to say. But I knew it was God, like I knew it was Him. But it was just so hard because it, it goes against everything that I that I believe and that I stood for. So I I went I went to bed I think. I was I was still a little um unsure of everything, but I had this peace. I had this this joy like oh my goodness there's not a word to describe what I felt but it was just amazing and I went to bed the following day it was Saturday I had planned on going to church but I, I couldn't I just couldn't go to church with everything that was going on I couldn't go so I stayed home the entire day and I never prayed I never read the Bible I did nothing that was spiritual I just stayed as far as possible from everything that was spiritual because I never wanted to hear the voice again I I never wanted any more encounter or anything I just wanted to I just wanted to get past everything that was going on so I I just go through the day as silent as possible keep my mind on stuff that are not spiritual or you know that was that wouldn't venture in me having another experience similar to what I had so Saturday came by and Saturday night I I was talking to a couple of my friends again and I was telling them about the peace that I experienced and everything that happened to me and they didn't believe me they didn't believe me they they say God will not say those things to you. There's no way that's God. And I was concerned that they didn't believe me because these were people who should believe me. Like these were people who knew who I was. They they know the things I I stood for, and you know they they are accustomed to me saying God say they. However, they didn't believe me. So the day went by and I went I went to bed and Saturday night about three o'clock the Lord woke me up 
and I guess this was his way of comforting me or giving me assurance. He said to me about 3 o'clock in the night, he called me by name, he said, Chris, do you remember when I told Abraham to kill Isaac? And I said, yes. He said, it was not Abraham's custom to kill. And plus, Isaac was, the, was a promise. Abraham had been waiting for him for so long. And now this voice told Abraham to kill Isaac. Then he said to me, Chris, how did Abraham knew that this was me talking to him? And I, I thought about it for a while. And I said, the spirit brought it to me. I said, Abraham knew it was you because he had a relationship with you. But that's how Abraham knew that it was you talking to him. And then he said to me, he said, Chris, that's how you know it's me talking to you. That's how you know it's me. And I was encouraged, like I was so happy and, and that made perfect sense. That made perfect sense to me. And, you know, he was getting biblical and he was talking from the Bible. So there's no way they're going to say that this is the devil. So the morning came and me being me, I I told my friends, my colleagues, guys, the Lord spoke to me last night and he explained what he been saying to me and he asked me a question and I want you to try and answer this question and I told them the question and they said it was a test, it was a test, it was a test, God was testing Abraham, I'm like besides the point, beside it being a test and all that, Abraham still knew it was God before he knew it was a test. He still knew that it was God. And I said that to them and they were, I understand what you're saying, Chris, but still, there's no way God is going to tell you not to keep the Sabbath. Of course, I was discouraged. I... I wasn't happy that they didn't believe me, but I couldn't stop what was going on. It was out of my control. It was out of my hand. I, I had nothing to do with it. I was just caught up inside of it. So, let me try to make this as short as possible. So, they didn't believe me. And Monday night, the Lord came to me again. Um, I'm trying to remember everything is kind of jumbled, but it's a lot. The Lord came to me again, and He said to me, Come unto me, all you who have labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When He said that to me, He said, Chris, is this rest talking about a Sabbath rest? And the Spirit brought it to me. I said, no. This is an invitation to rest in God every day. And he said, yes. He said, I want you to rest in me every day. He said, the person that you become on Saturday, I want you to be that person every day. He said, for you, the Sabbath is going to be a lifestyle. It's not going to be something you become on Friday evening throughout Saturday. So the person that you are on Friday evening, I want you to be that person every day. So come unto me, all you who labor under heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And that was just so beautiful. And I told my friends the following day and they said the same thing of course 
They said, yes, you should rest in Jesus every day, but that don't mean you should not keep the Sabbath. And I'm like, guys, that's not what he was saying. He was saying that every day for me, is, I'm going to be holy. This is who I am, not something I become. And they were like, yeah, you should rest in him every day, but still, you should still keep the Sabbath. But I'm like, if I'm going to be doing Sabbath stuff every day, then it's going to be, you know, different. And they were just not getting it. So, I... I was discouraged. I was discouraged. And as I as I talk about this, I am I'm freeing myself. I was discouraged by them not believing me. But God was talking to me, so it was fine. It was still hard because by this time my fiance we were not communicating. My you know, I was just the only one against the world. Everyone was on me and no one was trying to understand or, you know, find me. Be where I am and, 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 and be a shoulder for me to, to, to lean on. No, no, no one did that. Everyone just wanted to tell me what was going on with me and what they think and a whole bunch of stuff. And I was just not... Yeah. Anyway, so the following night, this was by Tuesday now. The Lord came to me again at the same hour, 3 o'clock, about that timing. And he said to me, He said, he, this, was, this time it was about Peter. He said to me, oh yeah, he said, Chris, do you remember when I led the disciples through the corn field on the Sabbath day? I said, yes. He said, um, Peter, Peter is bold and Peter is outspoken and that's the type of person Peter is. He said, if Peter was a Sabbath keeper the way many people are today, when I led him through the corn field, why did he, along with the other disciples, why did he not stop me? It's clear that he, he, he wasn't afraid. When I gave him the vision, when I said with the with the with the with, when he went up and he felt whatever, and he saw all different kind of animals, clean and unclean, and the voice said, "Rise, Peter, kill and eat." And he said, "Not so, Lord." He said, "Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean." He said, "Seeing that Peter was so bold to 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 seek to." inform me of these things or to correct me rather why did he not stop me that day and said not so lord it is not our custom to go through the cornfield on the sabbath because it wasn't according to i think it's exodus um 31 verse um 30 exodus 21 verse 34 or 34 verse 21 one of them that one and i thought about it he said Notice that I said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, not so, Lord. He said, even though this voice contradicted what Peter believed, Peter still knew it was me. And Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything. He said, Peter called this strange voice, which was telling him to do strange things. Lord, he still knew. How did he know it was me? Same thing with Abraham. He had a relationship. He had a relationship, so he knew it was God. I went to bed again. I told my friends, of course, nobody, nobody wants to listen to me or, you know, nobody cares or anything. I went to bed again, and this was what? Um, Wednesday now? And I kind of got overwhelmed because I was all alone, and I had no one to talk to, no one to understand understood what I was saying and people were saying bad stuff about me and you know those who were with me in my immediate present were saying a whole bunch of stuff around me they were whispering the the entire conference came down on me pastors came down on me and a whole bunch of things and these people were just not loving I remember one saying to me um like if I don't believe why am I still what am I still doing here he didn't even come to try to explain to me he just like why are you here then because remember, it was a summer we were there. It was like, if you don't believe, why? 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 Because all these experiences, I was saying stuff on Facebook. So people were seeing stuff. 
And he was like, why are you still here? Others tried to talk to me like, you have great potential and we don't want to see you um, go down this road. So whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. And I was just, I, I became very discouraged at one point and I cried out to God that nobody believes me. I was so depressed by now and, you know, I was just so overwhelmed and everything was just not going the way I wanted it to go. So this was Wednesday night. The Lord came to me and he said to me, call me by name. He always called me by name. He said, Chris. He said, he said, I walk this earth, right? I walk this earth. The disciples witnessed my miracles. They saw what I did firsthand. Nobody told them. They saw everything. He said, they, they knew of the prophecy that I would be killed and I would be resurrected on the third day guys i know this may sound weird but it happened like it really happened and he said to me the, the disciples they witnessed all my miracles everything that i did they walked with me day by day they listened to me as i taught the people they were they were there he said yet still when i was resurrected and it was told to Thomas. Thomas said to me, Thomas said to the disciple, unless I see Jesus, unless I put my hand in his side and see the nail scars in his hands and all those things, I would not believe. I would, I would just not believe. He said, when I appeared to Thomas, Thomas fell down on his knees and he said, my Lord and my God. And he was crying. Jesus said to him, blessed are they who have not seen, but yet they believe. He said, Thomas, you, you believe because you, you're seeing me. But blessed are they who have not seen, but yet they believe. He said, Chris, if they didn't believe me, why are you worked up that they don't believe you? Why are you discouraged? They didn't believe me. I walked this earth and they didn't believe me. Why are you worked up? Why are you upset? Why are you angry? Why are you sad because people don't believe you? They didn't believe me first. They didn't believe me before they didn't believe you. They don't believe you. So why are you worked up? And I was comforted. I was rebuked, but I was comforted. I was like, yeah, it's natural. They didn't believe Jesus. Who am I? And I, as usual, I told my friends everything. Everything that happened, I, I told them. I told them alongside the way. Alongside the way, I keep informing them of every detail that the Lord revealed to me. I keep telling them. But nobody believed me, not even my fiance at the time. She didn't believe me. Okay, so this is what Thursday night now. Uh what happened Thursday night? I don't remember. I don't remember. But but let me tell you what happened Friday night. Friday night I had a dream. There was this lady who I really looked up to her. I admire her like she was my mentor like i look up to her i admire her so much her relationship with god it was it's just amazing i had a dream with her and in the dream uh i was in this big open place a big building a big empty building nothing was there but me and she walked in however when she walked in she she couldn't see me but i could see her from where i was and she was calling my name. She was um, like tipping toes and she was saying, Chris, Chris, and she was looking for me. This is all a dream. And for some reason, I, I was just, I stayed put. I never, I never moved. I stayed put where I was. And she kept looking and I don't know what happened, but she, 
she fell and when she fell she was wearing a dress and her dress was over her head by this and she was just exposed and when I saw this I ran to her and I, I tried to help her I tried to help her up and while I was there helping her up she grabbed a hold of me and she start she started to uh, attack me and it almost like she was trying to take my life and I woke up I woke up and when I woke up I was like what is this and you notice who God used this person who I love and the spirit gave me the interpretation he said to me the spirit revealed to me that um, the the underneath like the 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 my church I they, they have been exposed I have seen things about them that um, I shouldn't have I, I know things about them that I that I I, I I don't need to know they or uh, they were basically exposed to me and they're gonna try and hurt me not physically but you know people say stuff and they really did people say crazy stuff so that explained the dream and I was like wow nobody believed me though and my fiance and I we were not talking because every time I would try to talk to her she would I'm like start crying and stuff so we didn't talk or anything however I prayed and I said Lord you gave me this young lady and I don't think you're gonna 